So next, what I'm gonna put up, so now that you know what these five primary bearers are, let's put up, I've got a, a diagram for you on the nine triggers. There are nine, at least nine, and actually I'm gonna talk about a few more than nine tonight, but there are nine fundamental triggers for leaky gut that I want you to understand because if you are doing these things, then you will actually create a problem within one of these five firewalls, within one of these areas. And remember, your gut can only take so much damage. You know, if one wall goes down, you still got four other walls, but if two, three, four walls goes down, that's when you start being more and more compromised. Now, number one, the number one thing that can create and trigger a leaky gut is absolutely food. And I would say, if we're talking about which food, the one that's probably the most well studied is gluten. But it's more than just gluten. We've got dairy proteins that can do it. Gluten can do it. Food allergens can do it. Food intolerances can do it. But gluten's probably the mo one of the most well studied. I'm going to pop up here on the screen another diagram because I, I want you to understand that when I say gluten, really it would probably be better if we said grain. Now one of the reasons why I wrote no grain, no pain because it's so much deeper. It goes, this whole issue goes so much deeper than just simply gluten. Gluten is a family of proteins found in grains, but there are other aspects of what we find in grain that can rip holes in your gut lining. For example, some of the other components about grain, some of the other characteristics about grain. One is gluten and we know gluten causes leaky gut. But another is mold, and we know that mold can cause leaky gut. Another is mycotoxins, or mold toxins, and we know that can cause leaky gut. Another aspect of grain is, happens to be the, um, the hype, for, depending on whether you're eating it processed or not, but the high levels of, um, they use a substance in grain to stabilize it called microbial transglutaminase, and, and this has been shown to cause leaky gut. There are other elements, like pesticides, that are found heavy in grain. And pesticide is actually a category of its own. It's actually one of the triggers because you can find pesticides in more than just grain, obviously. So grain is at the top of the list for many different reasons because there are a number of different properties about grain. One protein in particular that, that very few people ever talk about is a family of proteins called ATIs, amylase trypsin inhibitors. And these proteins actually have been directly shown to cause gastrointestinal inflammation and open your gut lining right up. And it, they have nothing to do with gluten. So if you've ever been gluten tested negative and you still feel better on a grain-free diet, it very well could be because you were reacting to ATIs within the gut lining itself. So keep in mind there are a lot of properties and, um, and qualities about grain that make it a perfect food for destroying the gut lining. And so you've got to be very, very careful if you've been told you have leaky gut and you're not truly gluten-free and you're not following the no grain, no pain protocol, you're gonna have a really hard time ever allowing that GI lining or that gut lining to restore. Now, one of the other triggers, besides food, one of the other triggers, so food is a trigger, we can say that medications are a major trigger. There are a lot of different medications that can damage the GI tract. So whereas if gluten, again, gluten can actually damage tight junctions. So grain can damage tight junctions, can knock them out, medications, depending on which ones we're talking about, if we're talking about antibiotics, antibiotics can knock out the microbiome. If we're talking about the mucosal barrier, if you've ever taken a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like aspirin or ibuprofen, and let's put up, I've got a, a study um, on aspirin and alcohol actually causing leaky gut problems in people. And, and I put alcohol in the drug category because alcohol is a drug, right? And just because it's not a prescription drug doesn't mean it's not a drug. But chronic alcohol use, we know, causes intestinal permeability. Aspirin, we know, causes intestinal permeability. And the reason why I bring this up today is because so many people are told by their doctor that a glass of wine a night is perfectly fine. Even two glasses of wine a night might be perfectly fine. And so these people go on through their lives, they're eating grain free, they're doing the best they can do, they're exercising, but they're still struggling because they're drinking alcohol. So it's very important that you understand that, that alcohol actually disrupts the mucosal barrier, causing a disruption here, you know, opening the lining of your GI tract up to more damage. So understand that even one glass of wine a night, if you're doing it every night consistently, you're gonna create this 
scenario and it's going to be really really a hard struggle for you to come back and recover from this so keep that in mind now on the food category there was one that I, I, I was talking about this the other day with a group of people and the question came up about potatoes and so since we were talking about food I'm going backwards here potatoes is one of the triggers on the leaky gut diagram and the reason I put that in specifically is because a lot of people don't realize that there's a particular glycoalkaloid which is a substance a plant-based substance found in potatoes that for many causes leaky gut and the people that generally will see this with are the ones that when they eat potato they have a lot of joint pain or muscle stiffness or aches so if you find that when you get potato and it creates pain and stiffness it's probably because the glycoalkaloids in that potato are creating the damage to your gastrointestinal barrier so we separate that out as a category simply because it's one of those unknown very little talked about or very little discussed categories and people just need to be made more aware of it. Back to, back to the medication. So we've got antibiotics, very common, non steroidal anti-inflammatory, alcohol, but what else in medication? What about antacids? So if you're taking Tums or Rolaids or Prilosec or Nexium or Tagamid or Zantac or, or Prevacet, any of these medicines that block acid production, remember you're taking out the entire first barrier of the GI tract when you're taking those medicines and a lot of people what they do is they say oh I'm gonna eat this food but I know I'm gonna get heartburn so instead of not eating the food they say I'm just gonna take the medicine and I'll put up with the problem later down the road that's a mistake don't do that it's it's a it's a horrendous mistake because long-term antacid use doesn't just disrupt this barrier it also so it disrupts your ability to fight infection but it also causes magnesium and calcium and zinc and B12 deficiencies. So it causes a lot of nutritional deficit. I'm talking about zinc and B12 and actually vitamin A and vitamin B2. So these are nutrients and amino acids and proteins. It can cause protein deficiency. All of these nutrients right here require that acid in order to be absorbed. And so if you're inhibiting your stomach acid, right, because you have poor food choices and you're just trading per poor food choices for the medicine you that comes you got to realize that comes with all these other problems and uh, and we just did a show a couple of weeks ago on calcium and magnesium and we did a show on B vitamins and all the side effects that come along with those deficiencies and you don't want to trade you know you don't want to trade out because it's just not worth it it'll crush your health and prevent you from repairing and restoring your health and two, remember that zinc is required to heal leaky gut so if you're doing something that creates leaky gut but at the same time prevents a leaky gut from ever healing that can also pose a huge problem or a huge risk as well let's see here yeah so Brigitte's asking about the white potato issue is it just white potatoes or is it also sweet potatoes no it's it's white potatoes in particular. Now, when I say white potatoes, understand what that means. That means potatoes with white flesh on the inside. So um, it, you can do like those little red potatoes uh, with the white flesh on the inside, and those are going to have similar glycoalkaloids as like a russet potato um, or, one, you know, again, these big brown baked potatoes with the white flesh on the inside. So sweet potatoes are okay. White potatoes can be a problem. They're not a problem for everybody, but I just want those of you listening who maybe are eating a lot of potato but still struggling to have that knowledge so that you can make that change or make that adjustment and potentially overcome it. So again, major medications, my, uh, antibiotics, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, alcohol. Now, I said non steroidals but steroids can do this too, so you should be aware that steroids cause leaky gut as well. And what I'll refer you back to is we have a great article on Gluten-Free Society on um, on medications that disrupt gut function and so I have a whole article and a complex diagram on this topic that if you're if you're taking a medicine that I'm not talking about tonight you just want to double check or re-reference you can go back to that article and you can check it out in more detail so other things that we know can cause a leaky gut pesticides and this has been known for quite a while but it's more than a lot of people are on glyphosate right now as being a major issue and, it, and it's a major problem there's no doubt about it but there are other pesticides as well uh, pest, and when I say pesticide understand I'm talking about the category of pesticides herbicides weed killers um, etc so like atrazine which is commonly used on crops today is another example 
of one. This one actually, for, for a lot of people, mimics estrogen and it can also create symptoms of hyperestrogen uh, dominance. And uh, so hormonal dysfunction, it can come with hormonal dysfunction, but these are very too commonly used in applied pesticides or, or herbicides, etc., that are used on most of our GMO, GMO grown crops. So things like GMO uh, alfalfa and GMO sugar and GMO corn and GMO beets, etc. That's where you really have to watch out here for the glyphosate, but then atrazine is, is used as a broad applicant for a number of different for a number of different types of, of crops. So you've got to know that pesticides, you want this is why we're looking for organic food. We don't want to buy conventional food where we can buy organic or if you want to want to grow your own garden, have your own small garden in your backyard, it's always a good idea to try to grow some of your own food. If you don't have enough space, maybe you live in an apartment, there's no room for a garden, it's a great idea to join a local organic food co-op. It's much cheaper than as it's seasonally available because one of the one of the fundamental things that we can do, because I said here up here, is that food can cause a leaky gut. And this, when, I'm, when I say that, really what I'm referring to oftentimes food allergies. So one of the ways people become allergic to different foods is when they never change their diet, when their diet never has any variability or dynamic change to it. So one of the things you can do from the food perspective is if you eat with the season, then a lot of times you will, will help to reduce or prevent the likelihood that food you're going to come back allergic to certain foods in the future because you're dynamically rotating your diet. And when you dynamically rotate your diet based on the seasons, again, it's just a great way to help try to prevent food-induced aspects of leaky gut. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.